I would like to welcome to the stage um, to chat a little bit with us, Nike Bajomo, who's the Executive Director, Business Development for Stambik IBTC Pensions. Can we please make her very welcome? Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, and thank you for being here. Um, I believe there are no protocols. Uh, I'll stand on existing protocols. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for very much for joining this session sponsored by Stambik IBTC Pension Managers. I stand here on behalf of my CE, um, Eric Fajemisi, um, who is unavoidably avoidably absent, and he is the um, CEO of Stambik IBTC Pension Managers and also the leadership of Stambik IBTC Holdings, with, which is our business belongs to. As you may be aware, Atex is in its fourth year, and we have been partners from inception. We have always supported Atex because we believe that the vision of this event aligns with our purpose as a business, which is making progress real for our clients and our stakeholders. We believe that creativity and intellect can serve as sources of livelihood for individuals who decide to make a career out of their passion for painting, drawing, sculpting, and other interesting forms of art. In other clients, art is cherished, and patrons sometimes pay a fortune for works of art that are considered collector's items. We want to promote a culture which ensures that artists are appreciated for their ingenuity and adequately rewarded with the premium and realities that, are their, that their work attract. We are proud for the milestones ArtX has achieved year on year in raising awareness for art in Nigeria. We are optimistic that the conversations that will take place here today will not only educate, but inspire a movement and reform the industry in Nigeria so that more people will appreciate art. And hopefully, as time goes by, art will be recognized as a viable asset class in Nigeria. Thank you very much for coming, and welcome. Um, now I'd like to welcome to the stage our panelists, if you could please come up as I introduce them. Uh, we have with us moderating this panel, Oba Nsugwe, QC and SAN, widely acknowledged and recognized as a leading barrister both in the UK and Nigeria. Um, he also travels very widely to attend visual art exhibitions and fairs. Um, we appreciate having you here. Welcome. Also joining us on this panel, we have Reni Folawio, a businesswoman, fashion entrepreneur, uh, founder of Alara, West Africa's first fashion, luxury, and lifestyle concept store. Um, and of course, just a fantastic patron of the arts. Thank you very much for joining us. We have Tunji Akintoku, MBE. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, he's a director and head of sales at Price Waterhouse Coopers. Um, he's been collecting for over 30 years and is especially passionate about art work as a bridge to the continent, which I think is excellent. And last but certainly not least, we have Catherine Weir, who will be joining us. Thank you, Catherine. Now, she created a very interesting uh, cosmopolis at the Centre Pompidou in 2016 as a platform for research-based and collaborative art practices um, and uh, constructing bridges between new forms of creative experimentation and critical thinking. And of course, in her previous uh, capacities, has been uh, building in, uh, for museums, collections. Um, so tonight, or this evening, our panelists are going to take us through a very interesting process of building um, a private art collection. Um, they'll be working with a budget of one million new Nigerian Naira, which equates two million US dollars, because that's the world we're going to be living in. Um, and of course, just giving us a little bit of insight as to what it takes to build that sort of collection. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. And um, good evening, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us this evening on Collecting Live. Uh, we have to thank our artistic director who's sitting at the back. That's uh, Tayo Gumbi. Um, Tayo, thank you for not telling us what we're doing up here, but that's, that's fine. So, uh, the scenario is this. We are advising a new collector, and that new collector has money. Not our money, obviously, but we imagine it is our money, which is good. Two million dollars, uh, as you've heard to start a collection of works, whether they be modern, contemporary, video, whatever. And our task, our easy task with this um, 
panel that I'm honored to share the platform with is to advise the collector. And when you had the introduction at the beginning, uh, I think you were told that there would be questions at the end. That, that's wrong. There are going to be questions throughout uh, the panel session because we want to hear from you on which artworks we should buy and why. We may take your advice. We may choose to ignore your advice, but that's our prerogative. Before we get to um, the interactive session and the discussion, I just want uh, my fellow panelists to just say a little bit about themselves and what moves them as collectors or um, curators or the passionate about art. So I'll start with um, Catherine. Catherine, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming along to this uh, panel about how art moves us in different ways and um, why we might put together groups of works. Uh, for me, this is all about telling stories. It's about who we are and how we would like to engage with what stories art can tell today, whether that's about rewriting the past, past histories, giving new visibility to artists who have not been uh, recognized as they should have been for their work, for the importance of their work to a bigger story. Um, and it's also about working with artists today about writing the future, it's supporting them, being in dialogue with them, and allowing them to do their work and create uh, new ways of interpreting the world. Over to you. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Similar to you, it's about telling stories. I'm wanting to connect to people's struggles um, or experiences uh, in a way that helps us to think more about ourselves. So um, with, with art, you get to... Um, connect very deeply to people, connect to their anguish, and the freedom that the artist has to express themselves in a way that we regularly don't express ourselves in our everyday lives. I find art is a very great communicator, um, and I connect very much to that. Um, I, again, I am um, very, very much at, um, connected to young artists. I, I collect very more contemporary art than I do modern art, because I like the freedom that that allows allows, um, and I like the freedom of the different types of ways in which artists can ep express themselves. Um, I'm particularly um, um, attracted to issues of femininity, issues of gender, and those issues that people deal with, um, especially women, in today's world. I knew you'd say that. <laughs> right, Tuji, yes. Good afternoon. That's not working. <laughs> I'll take this one. So good afternoon, everybody. So um, I'm based in London, actually, born and bred. And uh, although I visit the continent a lot, um, I'd probably lo lose the word collector loosely because uh, I have collected for about 30 years, but I wouldn't say I'm a serious collector. I've just been a constant collector, which has amassed a reasonable um, you know, work, body of work over that time. And for me, the really interesting collecting is around narratives. And I'm a great believer in that you've got to own your own story and your own narrative. Um, because if you don't, somebody else will tell it for you, and maybe not in the way that you want. And I think art across Africa, whether it's sub-Saharan or, or North Africa, for me, has been a real interest to see how those narratives have played out, what I see out there, and what probably is more nearer to the truth. And I would like to see, and one of the things I'm more involved back in London, is how we bring more collectors, gallery owners, curators and artists together to be able to understand what we have and how we then drive that narrative forward. So it's, it's quite a, I'd say, a fairly new movement in London, but something that I'd like to see more in the continent as well. Thank you very much. So um, we really want to make this accessible uh, to all of us here because collecting has this mysticism about it which it shouldn't really have. Um, I remember a day when I used to, early on when I used to buy art, I used to be scared to go into a gallery. Um, the, it felt so forbidding. There'd be a video entry and you feel like you're going in and you're being frisked as you arrived and checked out. But art isn't about that at all. I think it's really about um, 
It's about community. Uh, it's about sharing ideas and conversations. And it should be accessible to everybody. So this is a session where we're keen that it is. Now, we um, want to move on to the choice of artists, um, Tayo, I think, uh, that we're going to have available to us. And will they be on the screen? Or should we just talk about them? Slide by slide. OK, fantastic. Um, so could somebody operate the slide for us? Is it me? Oh, OK. Too much work to do. I didn't anticipate this. Right, OK. Yes. So the first piece of work, I hope you can see it, is by a Sudanese artist called Ibrahim El Salahi, um, who now is in the latter years of his life. But I would describe him as a modern master. He had an incredible show at the Tate about five years ago. And he now shows permanently in the Tate. Um, and he's really one of the fathers, I think, of modern African art. And look at the sort of ink on paper that he's drawn there. So that's Ibrahim, uh, Life Diary. Ibrahim again, Ibrahim El Salahi. Ladi Kwali, who I think you'll be familiar with. A potter. Um, she was somebody who was part of a pottery school, a college in Abuja. And she collaborated for about 15 years with a, an incredible potter from the UK who spent his time in Nigeria starting a school. And that was principally uh, women pottery. And beautiful work. Uh, <coughs> she showed in, in London at the Barclay Gallery in the 60s. So she has a, she has a real pedigree. Um, beautiful work. L. So... We say he's Nigerian, but um, it's possible he's Ghanaian. <laughs> uh, who has this? Who basically has spent most of his life at Nsuka a University, which is my father's university where my father taught, and now is what I describe as a blockbuster artist. He's probably the um, the biggest selling artist in terms of gross in Africa. Uh, is L, and at the moment has a number of incredible shows in museums all over uh, the world. That's L again, after the blaze. Julie Mertu, Ethiopian. Um, beautiful, really, really beautiful. So I hope you're memorizing all this, because at the end of the day, I'm going to ask you to, to buy, OK? Now, um, no favoritism, but this is one of ours, Njideka. Uh, I don't know how many of you heard Njideka at Artex. I think it was la the year before last. Um, fantastic talk and uh, obviously has done incredibly, incredible collage work uh, in the US. And now she's into the millions, as you know, um, in terms of her sales, um, intimate scenes that she, she does. OK, so I'm going to pause now. How many people have come across Toyin Odutola? Yes? Can I give you the mic? You tell us about, about her, what you think of her, OK? I'm really excited about Toyin's work actually. I've been a fan of um, her work for a couple of years now. Um, I'm also really excited that she's having a solo show in London next year um, at the Barbican, I think. So that's um, really exciting. But now I'm really interested in the textures and the detail as well, because I'm very much more um, of a painting kind, admirer of painting um, in terms of like visual arts. So um, I like her use of colors as well. Um, the different shades. I know in some of her work she uses blacks 
a lot. Um, but yeah, I'm really interested. I'm really, um, I think I'm more interested in kind of like the detail as well. I think if you know, if you've seen her art out and about, um, I think when you do encounter her art again, you can always tell it's toy-ins, it's so unique. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited about that. Somebody at the back wants to say something? Yeah. Somebody else? Okay, I've got my mic back. Yes, I'm back. Um, Toying on Dutula started in pen, in black ink, and she uh, would use black ink on blackboard on charcoal and she found it would come out gold and she was exploring the idea of blackness on a very deep level and um, I mean I can tell you now she's probably the third in terms of sales she sold for over half a million this year and she's still a very young artist in an, in an auction at Sotheby's so you have to think carefully before you spend on, on toy. Right so this is a new um, category and I'll tell you about the categories in a moment. Uh, how many people have come across Deborah Roberts? Hand up? Yeah? So, so tell us what you think about Deborah Roberts. I mean, I love her work. I just saw her work recently in London at Stephen Friedman in the summer. Um, again, I'm very attracted to her work because it um, speaks a lot about um, black experiences um, and the different ways that it could be portrayed as super strong as well as in a very vulnerable situation. So um, I love collages. I love collaging. I think it's a, it's a great medium that a lot of black American, um, African American women have sort of, um, sort of taken on a, di to a different level. And if you look at the, the piece on the right, I think it's on the, on the right here, um, I mean, you can see strength in that image and you can also see vulnerability and you can also see um, a lot of um, different influences that sort of, sort of show uh, the black experience and how contrasting that could be. So I think she's very strong, strong artist. For me, I really love Deborah. Really, I couldn't agree more, thank you. Do you want to say anything about Tony? Oh, yeah. No? Okay, all right. Tunji? No. No? Fantastic. Uh, man of few words. So. Uh, I, in fact, had flicked up the next one. Does that look familiar? Yeah? Have people come across Joy Labinjol? Yeah? You again? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, just put your hands up. Who, who's heard of Joy, Joy Labinjol? Oh, no. Really? Are you telling the truth? You haven't heard of Joy. Okay. So... She is in her 20s, she's just come out of college. Um, she has a studio in Brixton, uh, in London, and she's got her first institutional show in the UK right now. And what she does is she paints from family albums. Uh, she's Nigerian, um, although she's lived in the UK all her life, but she paints things that she, intimate scenes from her family uh, growing up, she paints weddings, conversations, and she doesn't obviously follow religiously the pictures. She kind of deforms them a bit, as you can see. Um, but Joy, Labin Joy is certainly up and coming. And I, I think there is a, there is a Joy Labin Joy picture in the fair. Um, she's represented by Tiwani, the Tiwani Gallery. And um, Tiwani Gallery, in fact, have one way or another, shown us some really great artists. And Judeka's first London show was at Tiwani Gallery. And we were all there drinking our wine, ignoring the paintings, and made a big mistake. Uh, <laughs> because uh, we just didn't, didn't tweak. But um, that's joy. OK, Titus Kapoor. Uh, Catherine, would you want to say anything about the, his, uh, his practice as an artist? No? OK. Do you, do you familiar with it? No, no prices on there. So, um, 
he is, I'd say, a sculptor. Uh, and he uses all sorts of disused forms to make objects of, of well, beauty, I think. Um, he's, he's pretty well known. He's a US artist. He's, I'd say he's very established. He's not up and coming. Um, yeah, strong. That's, that's uh, Titus. Shabalala, self. Again, she, uh, an artist based in the US, and what she does is she uses um, discarded materials, so she uses cloth, she uses uh, pieces of paper, and she depicts women, uh, always depicts women, and she kind of gives them a certain dignity and a disfigurement at the same time, which she feels portrays the load they have to carry. And I think in the end, although she, uh, it's almost a collage of material which she knits together, she ends up doing something, I think, very beautiful and powerful. And you can see she's, I describe her as a very contemporary artist. And she's, she kind of dresses her women in a way that's extremely fashionable. You can see right down to the strong stilettos and the powerful shapes and forms um, of, uh, of her. George Oshodi. Photography, Catherine, is that as a form? Would you like to say anything about George Offshore's work? I mean, this is, I think, a series from his his, his Emmy is King series. You're familiar with with, with George's work, yeah? Um, I think you you will you will know you will know his photographs. I think he does a lot of work in the Delta, and he shows some of the. Um, devastation of the environment in the Delta through his pictures. Uh, very much, I think, a, ch a challenging photographer because he comes from a journalistic background and likes to really portray it as it is. So you can see the pollution filling the skies there. Um, Alimi, Alimi's work, entitled. Uh, does anybody want to say anything about Alimi? Has anybody come across Alimi's work? Collect Alimi? No? I don't collect Alimi, but I've got some of his work. I, I think, yeah, I think um, um, I've watched, um, we, we actually did a show for Alimi in, in Alara. I think it was actually one of our first shows um, when we opened the store. And um, he did a body of work which he we commissioned, um, and he was um, away in a residency for a while and came back completely refreshed with a completely new approach. And I think that's when he first did the sculpture work. Um, and I think that um, Alimi's growth, and the, the direction of his growth is quite impressive. I think his work in the last uh, few years um, has risen in value, and moderately it will continue to rise. Um, beautiful on dyed, on dyed linen. In fact, this reminds me a little bit of the exhibition that's at Alara at the moment. And if, if you haven't seen it, you should really go and see uh, the kind of patchwork of, of the way in which it's been knit together, the histories behind the cloths. And an, an, art, an artist that, um, Pedro, is just incredible. Um, you might want to say something about that, but I think that's a beautiful exhibition. There's an exhibition in Lara at the moment. Um, it's by um, Professor Kweju um, who It's a brilliant exhibition. She's the head of um, art, visual arts in, in Unilag, I think, if I've not got that wrong. And she's done this exhibition, which is called Indigo Reimagined. And she has put us through a process of simple dyeing process of, of the history and process of adira making in Nigeria. And what she's done is she's glorified each step. So, for instance, the screens with which um, Adire, that's made, called Adile Leko, that's made and with cassava, has been glorified into a beautiful sculptural piece. Um, she also has another piece um, which is called Stamping History, which is um, um, dedicated stamps that are used to make different forms of Adire. Uh, have create, she's used that to create a beautiful installation that you won't believe the amount, the variety of motifs that are involved. Motifs also tell our history. 
um, which talk about, which is a mixture of contemporary uh, design, stuff that people create now, historical, uh, stuff that reflects colonization, and just a mishmash of all this that create this spectacular piece. Uh, apart from that, she also created another piece which is called um, OJ Market Day, which is also um, sort of a, a patchwork of her experiences in OJ Market in Ibado, which, is, um, which used to be the center for indigo, where indigo from different parts of West Africa came to um, um, OJ Market in Ibado, and everybody used to come and buy. So she has this patchwork of indigo pieces, as well as the sand-colored fabrics, which she felt would um, situate the indigo in the very sandy color that over, over, overcomes Ibadan. So it's a beautiful, beautiful um, show, and I hope you each get a chance to go and see it. It's in Alara, and that's on Akiolubadi Street. Please try. I thought I'd give you a plug there. But it's the colors that remind, remind me of that show, it's, um, and the, the Adira cloth that's used. Oops, go back. Zinkwe. Dominic, Next Media. It's got a price on it, New Nigeria 6,000. Zigbe again, which is, I think, a great installation. Um, I, he's, he's an interesting artist. Dif different media, installation, um, a very interesting choice, I think. That's his mixed media canvas. Jerry Buhari, um, who actually moderated a very interesting talk yesterday with some of the old masters. Uh, but his work also beautiful, a Nigerian artist. And Phoebe Boswell, who um, Mixed heritage, she's a contemporary artist, she's based in the UK, does a lot of photographic, photographic work, and depicts old histories, ancestries, and she is, I think, somebody who is really up and coming. Um, and Tai Idaho, who uh, had, a, had an incredible show at the Zeitz Museum in, in um, Cape Town. Uh, her work was shown there. Um, and again, she's, she's a Nigerian artist based here. Faith Ringhold, a really huge, huge artist who uh, really struggled through, I think, times when women artists were not getting anything like the recognition they deserved. And she was somebody who had a political message as well about black American histories. Um, and in fact, led a protest, I think it was outside the Met or the Whitney Museum of, of women artists not being in those museums and insisting that they should be in those museums. And she had a, um, a show in London last year at the Serpentine Gallery. And uh, also a talk which I listened to uh, where, she, I think she's in her late 80s now, but still incredible woman um, with so much, I think pain in, in, inside her of, of marginalization, of protest, of racism, and of joy and color. Uh, which you can see from the jazz scenes that she shows, um, the happiness and the, the fact that music is so much part of our lives and our histories. Kerry James Marshall, who, so far as black artists go, um, is the biggest now. Uh, he has work that I think has sold now for close to $20 million. So he is now the biggest selling black artist. And you can, t you can see something of the artists we saw earlier. Toying, 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 I would say, would accept that he is one of the many influences on her. Um, he's a kind of a, a grandfather of a lot of the black American artists that are coming out of 
America now and depicting these figures. Simone Lee, American artist again, um, showing women so, so with such grace. And Theasta Gates, who I don't know whether you know about Theasta Gates. Um, Theasta Gates is, uh, I'd say, a social practitioner as an artist. He, he is very interested in forms. He's very interested in materials, very interested in the ordinary and showing it in a way that um, brings to life ordinary life, like lath black box or convex K, which is concrete and brick and wood. And he's had a number of shows all over the world. All right, so I think that gives you some idea of the kind of artist. So what I'm going to do is just tell you about which categories they're in. Okay, so in the, in the blockbuster categories, um, or international blockbuster categories, we have Theaster Gates, Kerry James Marshall, Simone Lee, and Faith Ringold. All right, so just going through them there, you, going back through them, those are five, I think, if I, if, I, if I can still count, five artists in the blockbuster category. And then we have the uh, contemporary Nigerian or African artists. So this is the category, a second category. We have five categories altogether, by the way. This is the second category, contemporary Nigerian artists. And we're going to buy one painting or one piece of work from each category. So you've seen the artists in this category. Phoebe Boswell is in this category. Dominic Zinkwe is in this category. And um, Jerry Buhari is in this category. There's Dominic. And then we have um, Analimi is in this category, contemporary African or Nigerian artists. Then we have uh, up and coming. So this is contemporary up and coming artists. Uh, Shabalala, uh, Titus, Kapfa, and Joy Labinjo, up and coming. And I think also Deborah Roberts up and coming. And then the next category is contemporary African blockbuster. So there's um, Toyo Odutola, Judeka, Julie Mertu, And then finally, we have the modern African, uh, I would say, masters. So you have the um, L, you have Ladi Kwali, Ibrahim El Salahi, that's it. So, okay. I'm going to turn now to my panelists to, and I'll remind you if you need reminding of who we're looking to buy. But we have uh, $2 million. And just maybe a, a one or two lines about who you would take from the modern African. So modern African, we have El Salahi. We have um, Ladi Kwali. In fact, we also have uh, Colette Omagbi, but I don't think we have any images from Colette. No, Colette. Omagbe, he's a, a, a woman artist who really disappeared from scene. She came into view in the 60s and then she disappeared again. So um, we, didn't, we didn't see much of her, unfortunately. But she's in there. And Elle, 
Zalahi, Ladi Kwali, and also in this category is Yusuf Brillo, but again, we don't have pictures of him, but I'm sure you're familiar with him. So, which would you take, Tunji, from this particular category? Um, I think I'd probably go with, um, more likely to go with um, Ibrahim L, to be honest. I like the... Ibrahim Yes. And the reason being, for me, is that you tend to, when you start collecting art, it was interesting when people put their hands up and you, how familiar you were with some of the artists. Um, you can do a little bit of research, but then more often then you're going to buy them what you like as well. So you've got to visually enjoy the work because you may buy it from investment, but you'd also want to ensure that you enjoy it if it's hanging in your house. So I'll do a little bit of history on, or a little bit of research on most artists. And when I look at this category, the, the one thing that fascinates me is that um, I'm very interested in calligraphy and that's something that he was interested in and he kind of brought those two worlds together more into the, um, to the modern um, category. So for me, I'd probably look at his work as being, he's been around for a long time. Um, you know, I think his work will continue to increase in price. You could argue and say you could buy one of the larger works, but uh, the first work we showed was probably the one I'd look at um, within the budget. Thank you. Catherine, I mean, obviously, the, but looking at the modern works, there is, is there something you'd say about the research and modern as against contemporary when you're collecting and starting out as a collector, people in the audience may want to think about whether they would go with contemporary work as opposed to modern, are there advantages or disadvantages or one or the other? I think it's really also a matter, primarily a matter of uh, focus and personal interest um, and uh, doing research is certainly the first step and then as I said before you know you may uh, really feel that it's very important to go back and uh, rewrite or reinforce certain aesthetic heritages and histories and contribute to the rethinking of how we got to where we are today, what the sources were, who the voices uh, are that have been less um, perhaps uh, considered. Um, but then I think another, beyond that, another point is what story you want to tell with your collection. So how can you put together groups of work that speak to each other. You may move from contemporary works back into modern works that you can uh, identify as sources, or you may make constellations of works that together uh, will add to each other's story. Um, of course, some people will focus around particular periods or, or media. There's many different ways to go, but I think the more that you can make that a conscious process of thinking about options and uh, the most meaningful direction for your own collection, the more that you will get out of uh, that process and also become more focused and defined in knowing what you're looking for and why. Thank you. Um, we're still on, I think we're still on the modern uh, Mazas Rennie. Rennie, which, which would you advise that we go for? Um, I, I'm confused because which I would like to or which you, I, I should advise you to? Advice, Well, depends. Okay. <laughs> um, I think that, I mean, this is an amazing section, of course, the masters. I think that Elena Sui is a legend. Um, I totally um, adore him and also adore the way his work has changed from here. To, and even though he's a very elderly man, just that he's doing very interesting work at the moment with the bottle caps and it's crazy. Um, so I would love an L. Um, Ibrahim's you know, contribution to creating a script from um, something that traditionally you know, exists in his environment is also super interesting. Um, and there's, there's another um, artist, what's the...? Yes, yeah, so we have... Um, there was one that's not actually here. Yes, 
Colette or Magbai? Yeah, Colette was like an amazing female artist who just sort of uh, changed a lot of the narrative and super strong. Um, so there's a reason to buy each one. And if I must choose, I would choose El because I absolutely adore him. Okay. So we have a conflict. <laughs> we have, so um, you would choose El yeah. and Sui, Elena and Sui. Yes. yes. And you would choose El Salahi. Yes. What would you advise? Yes. You look like you, you know the answer. <laughs> One is coming. You can solve our, solve our dilemma for us, please. <laughs> if I was... Can you, take you can take mine, please take mine. Okay. Okay. Very quickly, I think collecting purposes, I'll go with Ellen Natsui. Um, I think, you know, you, very soon you, there'll be nothing to snap up, and his style of, um, his style of art is unique. But, but to display my house, definitely El Salahi. That's a very good answer. <laughs> so so if, I had to, if I had to pick one, I think I would, I would do El, 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 El Natsui. Okay. Thank you very much. What would you say to that? I think you've made a good choice. Okay. So can I just ask the audience to raise your hands? Uh, I think we're down to a choice of two. The, the, all of the artists that have been mentioned, Ladi Kwali, Yusuf Grillo, um, Colette, Saidu Keita, no images from Saidu Keita, but uh, I hope you're familiar with Saidu Keita as a photographer. Catherine, if Catherine were to make a choice, she might be fired. Um, and then Ibrahim El Salahi. Okay, so well, I think we're down to a choice between El Salahi and uh, El and Ansui. So if you raise your hands, who would go for Ibrahim El Salahi? I better put him on the screen. So that you, I put him on the screen so that you're influenced. There we go. I mean, how could you not? How could, uh, that's better. Yeah, okay, raise your hands. Right, yeah. I mean, if you look behind you, Tayo has a hand up. So if you know Tayo is going for Ibr Ibrahim al Salahi, you know that it's the right choice. <laughs> and who would go for L? Wow. It is 50-50. What do I do? <laughs> okay, let Just, just a reminder, as a collector, you also have a budget. So that's the other thing to consider, the other four categories. And maybe one thing to just throw there is that when you're collecting, you tend to have a portfolio mix. So if you're going to spend a lot on a particular one work, it may, you, know, you may not be able to invest in others as you go through. So should we just put that aside and keep going? Yes. And we come back to deciding from this. We, come back, we can come back to that. So we'll go to the next category. Um, contemporary African blockbuster Julie Meltu uh, then we have um, also in this category we have Toying Odutola we have Njideka of course and oh hang on a second I think Elle is in, in this category oh. Yeah, that's Toy. And that's up and coming. So let's go back. All right. So, um, Catherine, I mean, if I can just ask you a general question about origin of works and authentication of works when you're buying works. I mean, would you have advice about, about that to give the audience? 
Uh, so it's extremely important, especially in terms of modern art, to really focus on the documentation. So again, research comes in and making sure that you have, uh, in each stage of where you have been told that this artwork has passed from the hands of the artist into different collectors' hands or institutions' hands, uh, elements of documentation. I, I mean, it's central. The documentation is very, very important. So let's come to choosing from this category. So Njideka, uh, Julie Mertu, Tony Odutola, and I, I think Elle is in this category, Contemporary African Blockbuster. So, yes. Um, in this category, um, I would go for Toyin. Um, I do love her work. I mean, I adore Indijeka, but I love Toyin's. You can't get any more of Indijeka's work, so in reality. <laughs> um, um, and I think that um, the growth of Toyin in the last couple of years has been quite phenomenal, really. Um, and I think she's one of my favorite artists. And um, that plus the fact that it will grow in value makes a very strong case for Twain. Yeah. Tunji, what about you? I uh, couldn't agree more. I'd definitely go with Twain. So, again, I like the depth of her work. And I, I think over time, this is an artist that, that, you know, her work will just increase in value, but also something that you'll enjoy uh, as, a, uh, as a piece of work if you're fortunate enough to own one. So I would definitely uh, invest in that. I hope one day she comes and speaks at, the, at an art text. She's an incredible speaker. And um, yes, so th we have unanimity here. Does anybody else want to say anything about this category? Uh, remembering that Njideka is in this category as well. Would anybody argue for Njideka to be collected here? I'm sure they're, I'm sure they're Njideka fans in the audience. Yes. Lady at the back. A mic over here, please. please. Just over that side. I hope a working mic. Yeah, um, I think I'll go for Angelica because um, I think her work is very original. It's very, it feels like you're almost in the picture and um, the story she tells, uh, I can actually identify with some of them. So. Definitely an inch Which stories can you identify with? <laughs> I'll leave that to my <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Uh, Tunji said something earlier about sharing collectors', collectors works and the fact that as collectors somehow we're a little bit secretive and we don't like showing what we've collected and passing on information. That reminded, that reminded me of what Tunji, Tunji said. But um, yeah, she draws you into the picture, and I think you wouldn't be going far wrong with Njideka. So, but I, on our panel, we have definitely unanimity. Let's go on to the next one, which is uh, contemporary up-and-coming artists. Um, oops, I think I'm going the wrong way. Okay, here we go. So, in the contemporary category, we have Deborah Roberts, who has these incredible collages, mainly children, um, showing them as powerful, powerful but vulnerable by breaking them up. We have Joy Labinjo, who definitely is up and coming. And we have Titus Kapoor. And finally, we have Shabalala Self. Um, Catherine, would you, would you say anything about, um, I guess, trends? When you're looking at up and coming artists, uh, how do you tell whether an artist is going to stay the distance? And, not just pack up as you're thinking, as you're counting your millions, the art artist suddenly says they've re retired. Uh, what, what do you look for in an, art, in an artist's practice that shows that the artist 
will carry on working and learning. It's the million dollar question for collectors, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And there are no guarantees. So I think you really have to think about how interesting the work is and how uh, engaged the artist is in her practice, you know, in terms of who to support. Um, then, of course, at particular times, you can observe that certain uh, styles, media, uh, particular ideas also are what you call trending or, you know, somehow in, um, in the air at that moment. And so there as well, you have to try and distinguish between those who have something quite individual to say that relates and is coherent with their practice as it stands in the past and those who may be more uh, influenced or following you know, that trend at that time. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think you need to look at any work in the context of an artist's practice over a longer period, even when they're quite emerging. Where did that come from? What have they been doing before then? Yeah. Uh, where do they think that might develop? You know? yeah. Tunji, what would you say about uh, longevity? I think it's, um, it's an interesting one. Uh, and when you look more at the contemporary artists now, it's going to be increasingly difficult to work out you know, their longevity, sustainability, whether they'll continue. But I also think from an investment in the collector's perspective, um, you buy the work based on the moment and what you like and the richness of that particular piece of art and personally I worry less about you know whether they're going to be around for a long time there's probably a, a selfish part will say that if they're not around for a long time the work becomes rarer and increases in value but I probably go back to what I've said before Robert, is that I tend to buy my work based on what I like I'm very much more towards surrealism work I like more cubism work you know I like a lot more of that style much more richness I'm less likely, we had this conversation before, I, I probably collect less modern, just because for me, it's more literal in its uh, form. So this, you know, this um, category, whichever you collect, whether they're an artist around for a long time or not, I think you will always do well with it. And the up and coming artists for me are the ones I'm watching, because I think that's what the future will, that, dynasty or that stage will then change, modern will become whatever it is, contemporary will be another period of time, and then there'll be a new one which these new artists will be part of. So. What about representation? Who's representing the artists? Who's talking about the yeah. artists? Who are those kind of people? And what about the idea of listening to people who are experts, supposedly, who are discussing a lot about particular artists? Doesn't that help in determining perhaps how far that artist can go? I think that's a very valid point because if you're not being talked about, then you're not on the radar. A lot of it is exposure. And so what you say about who's representing the artist, it's actually very important to look at the gallery. Uh, is this a gallery that supports artists? Is this a gallery that gets them into institutions? Is it a gallery uh, that will keep you updated? Um, uh, not a gallery that is into trends. I think trying to spot the next big thing, inverted commas, is something that keeps most of us awake at night, I'm sure, when we're collecting. Um, and so what I'm interested in what the audience thinks about this up-and-coming category, which is a very interesting one. What distinguishes that up-and-coming artist in your minds and um, motivates you to follow that artist before we make our choice? I, I'm looking at you because uh, I think you, you can help us here. What, what would you say in the up-and-coming category? What do you look for in the up-and-coming category? One of the things you want to look for, the uniqueness. You want to look for you know, the freshness of the idea. Then you want to look at things that maybe you know, feature, um, let's say futuristic. Um, so it's a combination of all those things. You, you want a story where, but when you see it, you could never have contemplated it before. Yeah. And it's something that is timeless. Yeah. So you know that 
10 years, 20, 30 years from now, it will still be fresh. Yeah. It's tough, but those are some of the things you want to look for. Thank you very much. Um, at the back, a mic please to uh, a collector at the back. What would you look for, Bing Bing? Um What I'd look for is um, how prolific they are. Because I think the young and up and coming artists is uh, prolific. I, I think that's a problem. I think they're probably starting to think this particular style seems to sell, and they start sort of churning out the same thing, either it's just the der different derivations of the same thing. So I, I feel up and coming artists should be much more careful in their practice. And definitely, if they're prolific, I think it's, it can be off putting for a collector. It, that's an important point, actually. You start to see the work everywhere. Um, yes. I see the audience are really okay. getting into it. <laughs> into it. Their hands are coming up. Sir. Yes, sir. What would you say about up and coming category, please? I want to talk about that in the sense of this nature. But Mali has had a music or still has a music. One thing about good music, when it hits you, feels no pain. If an artwork gets to you, yeah. it's emotional, it's an appeal, up and coming or not. If we consider up and coming and the reasons given so far, we'll be talking about the Wall Street agenda regarding the artwork. If I love an artwork and it appeals to me, I pick it up, up and coming or not. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, that's, that's true. Um, yes. Uh, please. Yeah. Um, I'm not necessarily a collector or, or uh, expert, but when I look at art or artists, like contemporary art, I think the, I'm very interested in the speculative nature of it. So what kind of questions the artist is asking that is forward-looking, that would, is relevant to now, but also like future in the sort of context of socioeconomic like, environment? I mean, that, again, for me, that's so important. It, does the artist have a unique voice? What is the artist saying? Is the artist saying something that's been said before? Is the artist saying something in a different way? Um, obviously, artwork does speak. It does speak to you. And it's very important what you just said. OK, so we're going to make a choice now. I know that a few people want to say a bit more. But I'm interested in what Rennie is going to advise us to buy in this up and coming category. I have a feeling I know what the answer is, but Rennie. Really? Yes. <laughs> Tell me then. Begins with D. <laughs> Actually, I'm a bit torn here. Yeah, Deborah is one of them for sure. And I really like Shabalala. Um, so in this category, I can't choose one. I will choose two. Choose two. Go ahead. Which two? Deborah Roberts and Shabalala. I like Joy Labinjo, and I think that she has a lot of potential. Um... But I've liked the other two for longer. Yeah. <laughs> so. Tunji, what about you? <clears throat> I'll agree with you on Deborah, um, but I will go with Joy. So we'll probably have to with the common ground. We have three pieces here. That's interesting. Um, I mean, I'm interested to see what Joy paints when she finishes the family album. Yeah. You know, because yeah. that album will finish. And then what's, what's next? Uh, I'm sure she'll answer the question because she's a fine painter. You can tell her compositions are beautifully and they're very simple. Uh, but Joy will tell us what's next, I'm sure. So that's, I think that's a great variety. What about the audience? What, who would you go with? If I ask you to raise your hands, who would go with um, Deborah Roberts? You're shaking your heads. <laughs> You see, the, what, the, 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 the smart ones at the back have got their hands up. You wouldn't go with Debbie Roberts. Uh, 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 uh. Yes, you would. Absolutely. Why would you go with Deborah Roberts? Why would you go with Deborah Roberts? You know, they learn, the children are, they learn, I don't know, they're powerful. I feel like you can resonate with it. There's a message, it's original, even though it looks like it's collage, but it's like, you know, I don't know. I like it, and then it, I like... It, it, incredible artist, Deborah yeah, Roberts. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, who would go with Joy? Joy Lavinjo. Okay. Very good. But before you were pretending you never heard of her, what happened? <laughs> now you have. Now you have. Yeah, yeah. She's, yes. She's still affordable, so you need to get in. And um, who would go with the last one I was going to ask you about is Shabalala. Shabalala? Yeah? Sir, why would you go with Shabalala? Yes. Uh, I, I don't know. I just like it. I like I, it's It's original. It's doing its own thing. It's not really engaging, but it's kind of doing its own thing. And I kind of like, okay. uh, there's something about it I like. I like the vibrancy of it. Yeah. And the uh, historical, which is in Egyptology or something, I don't know. Pretty unique. Yeah. yeah, I mean, almost difficult to to kind of engage with. But once you get over it, you can never forget Chabalala's work. Right, so the next category we're going to go with is um, contemporary African or Nigerian artists, and we're going to make a choice. Uh, we're probably running out of time, so we'll move on um, fairly quickly. So we, in this category, we have um, Alimi Adewale. We also have Jerry Buhari and Dominic. And we have Tayo Idaho and Phoebe Boswell. So, Rennie, what do you think? Difficult one. Very difficult. Should I go through Very difficult. Alimi. Alimi, Dominic. yeah. Dominic Zinkwe, yeah. Tayo Idaho, Phoebe Boswell, and Jerry Buhari. That's very hard. But you're a very decisive person normally. Yeah, I, don't, really I don't get tough. what's going on. <laughs> that's really <laughs> tough. I just think that for me, in this category, there's no one strong enough for me to pick at this point in time, for me. Um, I would rather pick from the other categories than have to pick from here. But okay. if I must, I will probably go for Dominique. Okay. So, but you will probably save your money. I'll save the money and use it for up and coming. Interesting. I, and it's more of a personal choice. I'm not that, I'm not that keen on mixed media at the moment in certain uh, varieties. So I'd probably steer away from some of it. However, I probably would look at um, Elimi for the sculpture. And simply again, because I tend to mix my portfolio um, and not just typically keep it to canvas and paintings, etc. So I'd probably, and what I like about him is that he does both. So you do have the choice there and the flexibility. And I do like it. I actually like the, if you scroll back to the first one, you know, I, I would definitely have something like that in the hallway. Any views? Choices? Who's brave enough to go with uh, Dominic? Yeah? Yes? Wow. Okay. We've got support. What about uh, Alimi? Yep. Um, and I mean, Dominic's great variety. Uh, if you were forced to choose, who would you go with? This category? Mm. It would be Dominic. Dominic. Okay. All right. So we'll move on to the final category, then we'll come back to Modern Masters. International blockbusters, uh, Faith Ringold. Um, so, so I mean, she's she's revered. That's all I can tell you. Uh, when people come back to talk about her work and her tapestries, when you see her tapestries live, let me tell you, you almost get knocked over. S seriously. The color, the vibrancy, the power. Um, the the ex exhibition she had at the Serpentine was just, it was just incredible, incredibly powerful. And I would say that really it's a good thing to take your children. Whenever you go to exhibitions and you're looking at art, take your kids and uh, let, just be interested in their reactions and their education. So that's Faith Ringgold. We've got Kerry James, who's just blockbuster. I can say no more. Um, 
Then we've got Simone Lee. And finally, we have Theaster Gates. Uh, Tunji, where, where would you go with this one? I'd probably break protocol slightly and probably do as Randy did before. I'd probably go for two. I know you're going to come back and tell me to go with one, but um, I'd definitely do Kerry James and I'd definitely do Faith. I love Faith's work. I have seen it as well. Um, I think it's extremely vibrant um, and I'd love to have a piece of her work at some point. And um, I think Kerry James, I think there is still some of his work that's affordable, just. But, um, you know, again, over time, it's going to increase in value and a good investment to have in your portfolio. Maybe affordable for you, but not for me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, here, yeah, I've oh, got... Sorry, sorry, you got one. I mean, um, I love Faith. I think, like, I did see the show at Serpentine, um, and I still can't get over how strong that, 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 that show, show was. was. She's kind of very much in the forefront of my mind, um, and I think it would be amazing to have her in our collection. Yeah. Um, Simone Lee is amazing. You know, she talks about female power and what she, how she portrays that in her work is super strong. Um, Kerry James Marshall is legendary, um, but emotionally. I would go for faith because I think the work is super beautiful and very powerful. Uh, one of the things I look for in an artist is the storytelling. And artists tell stories about different times in our lives. Some of those times we haven't actually experienced ourselves. But they tell that story in such a way you feel like you're there. Uh, and faith is one of those storytellers. She's, she's telling of about a time, I think, in the 50s. Um, just after the depression in, the, in America where there was just a feeling of liberation and um, joy uh, with the colors. I mean, if you look at her reds, amazing. But, 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 Kerry James is box office. Short and simple. He is just, right now, he is the man. So, I, this is the first time I'm choosing I'd go with Kerry James. I'd have to, uh, sorry, <laughs> but um, yeah, I'd go with Kerry James. What about the audience? Where, in this category, what would you, what would you, who would you choose? So if I ask you about Faith Ringold, who's familiar with Faith's work? Hands up, yeah? Only a few hands. See, that's why it's good to come to these talks, right? <laughs> Yeah, so tell us a bit about what you saw. Um. No, um, Faith Wingold, I've um, followed, and I, to be honest with you, she's powerful. She's an activist. So as far as I'm concerned, it's not just the beauty and the um, amazing um, you know, elements of her work, the colors, but the story and the fact that for the, the courage to tell, you know, it's not, she doesn't sort of pull punches. The tapestries tell stories of everything from slave trade to the emancipation to, you know, post-depression to life as a jazz singer in the, in the nightclubs, a female sing, you know, mm. female, solo females, everything. And she's really courageous, but she makes it interesting to look at. And I took my children and lots of questions about the emancipation, about the um, Sojourner Truth, you know, all the, all the powerful figures in the, in the history of African-American slavery. So she tells that story. But you know, she's also a, a, a illustrator for children's books. Uh, so if you go to any um, bookshops in, in the, say, New York, and you're buying children's books, and I used to do that a long time ago, so I was familiar with her work even then. And so she illustrates, so she, she, she appeals to both the very, very young and you know, to the much, much older. But I would go with her you know, any day. And I was you know, even lucky to sort of chance upon meeting her when, at the Serpentine at the opening. An amazing woman. I thought I knew you would go with her. She's an incredible artist. Yes, at the back. What would you, what would you say? Well, who would you go with? There's a mic coming to you. I think I'll go with um, Faith. I've just crawled to my tapes from June, from the exhibition that you guys were talking about. Yes. And my favorite one is um, the Slave Rape series. Wow. Where she depicted three scenes. And the first one, I think, was um, Fear Will Make You Weak. 
Yeah. Where the slave master is actually about to pounce on you. Or something yeah, like about that. to whip you, that one. About yeah. to rape you. Yeah. And then the second one says, run, you might get away. Okay, and that's you sort of fleeing from danger. And the third one, which was the most magnificent one for me, was fight to save your life. And that one had a woman with, with a knife, with a, with a, with a cutlass about to defend herself. So I'd go for faith any day. <laughs> fantastic, yeah. fantastic. I have the pictures here if you guys Fantastic can. story. Thank you very much. Okay, so I think we may have time for um, a few questions, general questions, and they're being held up at the back. So I will read out the questions. How do you feel we can increase the number of art collectors who support African arts? Um, mm, wow. <sighs> Tunji. <coughs> That's a, it's a great question. Um, I think things like this help, I think, to really raise the awareness of the artists out there. This is a huge market. And then I think I'll go back to what I said before. We have a lot of art um, amongst us, um, even if you're a casual collector or not. One of the biggest challenges, I think, as Africans especially, we are hoarders by nature, which means that we don't necessarily share what we have or tell the stories, as we've heard today, around why we have that. And for me, the more platforms that are available to be able to get artists, collectors, curators, gallery owners, etc., together, and my background is I'm a technologist and I believe that technology can help with that. People want to be private with their collections, but they can also share what they have in a virtual way that people will be able to see what's out there. It would probably help also with uh, provenance and around authentication of work. So I think the more talks we have about this, and certainly in the UK we're starting that journey, um, if this can spread across the continent, it will certainly help to raise awareness of what we have tell our stories, but more importantly, see those artists coming through. We have to support the young and up and coming artists to ensure that they have careers to continue doing what they do. And if we don't collect and know what they have, um, and we don't share those platforms through galleries, through Artex, through other um, exhibitions, then we'll never do that and many will not make it. If I share just one very small story, um, my trust supported an African artist about three years ago uh, she was Moroccan-Italian. Um, I saw something in her that many didn't, and we funded her for about three years to just paint. And then when finally she'd painted and had a portfolio of work, we then launched her, and then we got her to believe in herself that she had a story to tell and that she had pheno you know, a phenomenal talent across lots of different disciplines. And there are lots of other people that may do that in isolation, but we've got to be able to get together as a people to support those artists that when they come through, they've got a platform to show their work. Catherine, you've been involved with African art for quite a while. I know there's a, some disputes about whether we should be calling it African art or not, but I call it African art. Um, how do we increase the collector base, would you say, of... Africans or people collecting African art, what would your advice be? Well, I think that the platforms like uh, now Artex and the Biennial in Lagos and other events that are focused around that are very, very important. So having some higher visibility platforms that draw attention, that give people the impulse to read more, to research more, um, uh, to have the conversations and so on. It's very important to have more great writing on all of this, these artists in very different, uh, again, locations. Uh, whether we're talking about, you know, in journals or online, um, around the world, and kind of to increase the visibility of the different histories that contemporary artists are drawing on as well. There's been very important work done mm -hmm. and that needs to, to keep on today. I just wonder whether that question was in relation to African art in general or to Nigerian art. It's important. Okay, so I think it says African art, yeah. It says how do we increase the, how do we increase the Good evening, sir. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Um, 
how do we increase the number of African, African art collectors? I, like like um, you've just said, I think platforms like Artex help. Um, basically, I mean, I think I agree with what everybody has said. I, I'm not going to come up with anything. Mm, yeah. Uh, this, I think, is a million-dollar question. What I have seen is an increasing interest in collecting. I mean, Sotheby's have just completed their auction where they were achieving record prices. But when you interrogate it, at least 70% of the buyers were coming from this continent. Of course, they can't tell you exactly who they are, but that, for me, is promising. What we're seeing is the beginnings of art funds where people are basically pooling their resources to buy African art. There's a fund that I'm aware of. It's not a huge fund, but $200,000 um, where people are investing in collectively and making decisions about uh, the buying of African art. You then have a number of the institutions who are, I think, increasing the collector base. Um, you've had the Tate African Art Acquisitions Committee where there's increasing interest and profile for African art. The Pompidou are doing something similar. Uh, we're seeing the American institutions doing something very similar. All of this is good for profile. And the big museums now, the large museums worldwide, know that they need to change their narratives. They know that they have excluded a very important history. So they're literally having to rehang now, where you hang a Picasso against El Salahi, because these pictures are talking to each other. You have a section which deals with the, the narratives. You don't just have it in the vaults of the British Museum or whatever. You have these shows where people are, can come and see. That will, I think, increase the collection of uh, African art collectors. It's such a big question, such an important question. But we move on. Um, the next question is, how do you uncover new artists? I have no idea. Renny, how do you uncover new artists? I look at a lot of art, um, and I look at many different places. So I look at the obvious places, and I look at the not, not so obvious places. And I think I have a lot of young artist friends. Um, my daughter is an art, she has a lot of young artist friends. So we're always looking, and I think that that helps a lot, because the more you look, the more you see. Um, artists don't pop up, and pop up everywhere. Um, so I look, I read, literally, um, and I think that's the way to discover, to keep looking. Anywhere I am, I look for somewhere to go and look at up and coming artists. I look at established artists. I'm always looking um, and I'm always learning. And I think the more you look, the more you see. For me, it's quite simple. W one thing I'd say is that Instagram is, I'm not very good with Instagram, but Instagram is a very good medium. If you're on Instagram, artists put their pictures on Instagram, particularly the young artists, and they're popping up all the time. I'd encourage you to go to their studios. So find out about the artist. If the artist is someone local, go to the studio and take an interest in that artist. And once you actually talk to the artist, you learn a lot more about what drives them, what they're thinking about, uh, in terms of how they're going to sustain their work. And that's how you uncover these artists. Um, look very carefully at their practices. Is, do they have a unique voice? What are they saying? Uh, are they saying something different? Those are the sorts of questions you, I think you should be asking when you're looking to uncover a new artist. So, do you want to add anything? Yeah, I'll add to, to, to what Renny said. I think that if you take the opportunity to use the ecosystem that's out there that makes this market work, then you will find more artists. I think I focus a lot on the up and coming artists coming through and what I've found is that many of them know other artists and once you support them, then you get introduced to others and I think that network has grown certainly over the years um, so that they do come to you for support but also to buy the art early. And I think you do have to make an effort to come to things like Art X but many other um, exhibitions either locally in your countries or here or um, you know, elsewhere on the continent. I think it's important to just keep seeking different routes to market that you'll find for art as it pops up. Um, and probably the, the, the best part is to just take time to learn about a new artist. I try as much as I can to learn about a couple of new artists every month that I probably don't know 
using Instagram, using, you know, different uh, things online and then following those artists, getting to know them. And that's one of the things I've found really powerful over the last few years is getting to know those artists personally because that makes a huge difference as well. Okay. Um, there's one last question and then we're going to end the talk. The question is about photography. Are collectors interested in collecting photography? Um, and is photography something that pales when you're talking about sculpture and painting? Is, pho is photography forgotten? What would you say to, to that, Catherine? Uh, I think that you need to again look at the context uh, and why you're collecting. Photography is an incredibly important medium today along with video and it's a medium that has had a huge importance in Nigeria and in uh, across West Africa and other parts of Africa. So if you want to tell stories about contemporary art in Africa today, it's almost impossible not to take on board photography um, as a medium. And then, you know, beyond photography, moving into installation, using photography, video installation, and contemporary practice of different forms that may be less about the production of objects, you know, I think collectors also should be thinking about what are the media of the moment? What are artists using today? What do they think are the most appropriate um, vehicles for responding to the questions of their time? So if you really want to be somewhere where things are transforming and being created today, then you need to beyond photography, be looking at all sorts of contemporary practices from performance and its documentation through photography or video, um, through installation, through different forms of relational, conceptual work. You know, the world is your oyster. You should be going out there and engaging with some of these ideas because they're really, really fascinating, interesting conversations that are happening around them. I think that's a great way to end. Um, I think it just leads me to, to thank my fellow panelists who have just been wonderful company and extremely knowledgeable. So thank you to all of you. And, and also to thank you as an audience. Thank you for joining in and talking about this artist and what you love and why you choose an artist. Um, I think that's one of the ways where we will increase the collector base. And finally, it's always good to thank your hosts and your person who's conceived this, my thanks to Tayo. Tayo, you've done a wonderful job. Um, you're, you're such a great supporter. And thank you to the organizers. Uh, it's been a great Artex. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.